Hey everybody, welcome to the next installment of the RMS wishlist. So the topic for this video is going to be effects. So these are things that can change the way the players interact with the map that don't necessarily have to do with the construction of the map in terms of its geography. So uh, let's get right to it. So I'll start off with a fairly simple thing. And that's basically to allow more moddable attributes for units and technologies. So in previous videos, I've shown a lot of what we can do with effects. We can change lots of things about units and technologies. For example, for units, we can change hit points, speed, line of sight, search radius, attacks and armors, lots of things. Same with technologies. We can change a lot of things there. The things we are able to change uh, through the RMS are labeled here in the randommap.def file. So we can see that there's a lot of things that can be modified, but there's also a lot of things that cannot be modified. So some of the ones that I thought would be particularly useful to be able to modify can be found on this list here. I have them broken up into uh, units over here and text over here. Most of these are pretty self-explanatory, but I'll talk a bit about the ones that may not be. So the idea of attack and armor indices. So if we look at any given unit, we can see that it may have multiple classes of attacks and multiple classes of armors. So we can see that it has six indices over here with each one a different class. But there are a lot of other possible classes that it could have, but it doesn't have an index for. So for example, if I wanted to modify this unit's uh, bonus attack versus archers, that would be class 15. So if I were to try and give it an archer attack in the RMS, currently it would do nothing because the unit doesn't already have an archer armor class of attack. So to demonstrate, I have two infantry units here. One is a legionary, one is a huskarl. With these effects, I am attempting to set both units to have 100 bonus attack versus archers. So I take the class 15 times 256 and add the value, which is 100. And when we go into the game, first we will take the legionary and we'll attack this elephant archer. And we can see it doesn't seem like it's doing 100 damage versus archer units. We can take the Huskarl, we can attack, and we can see that it seems that that bonus damage is taking effect. And that's because the Huskarl inherently has an attack index for the archer class, and the legionary does not. So what would be nice is that if that particular class doesn't exist in the unit's list of attack indices that it could be, be added when we try to modify it. So most of these other ones are pretty self-explanatory. And then regarding text, so the ability to add and remove storage types. So this is something that is possible to do with units but not technologies. So if we take a technology, for example, Town Watch, we can see that this only has a food storage index for a cost. If we wanted it to cost gold, there's currently no way to do that. We can only change the value of food because this is the only cost index. We can see over here that this snippet of code is, is how to add and remove cost types for a unit, multiplying it by negative two removes cost multiply by negative one adds the cost. And once that index is added, you can change its value over here. But there's no way to do that with a tech. And if we try to do something similar, we set the food cost to zero, but set the gold cost to 75. All it does is remove the food cost and doesn't add the gold cost. So it would be nice is that if we were to try to modify the gold cost, that it would add that index in the technology. The next thing that would be helpful is civ specific RMS effects. So right now, RMS effects have basically two options. 
you can either apply them to all players or you can apply them to only Gaia. So we have the effect mall attribute and correspondingly Gaia mall attribute. And pretty much all of the uh, effects that can be applied, they all have their Gaia equivalent. So currently there's no way to single out a specific sieve to apply an effect to, but in addition to like saying Gaia mall attribute, we could say Britain mall attribute and similarly for all the other civs in the game so we could affect things on a civilization specific level. Now I am aware that this can be done in a different way with XS, but having the ability to do this in the RMS would still be a nice thing to have. It's easier to manage a map if it's comprised in only one file as opposed to having to attach an external file and the less we rely on external files to make maps work, the less potential that has to cause sync issues in multiplayer situations. All right, so for the next thing, I've put together this example. So I have a fortified tower right on top of this TC. And what I want to do is I want to change its hit points from 1900 to 2000. So this should be a pretty simple thing to do. So I just say effect amount set attribute DLC fortified tower here hit points 2000. So that was able to successfully change the hit points. But let's say that since this is a, supposed to be an American themed map, that I wanted this tower to be looking like an Aztec tower. So since over here that the uh, tower is a Gaia object, I can just try to say set Gaia civilization to 15. So now the tower is looking nicer with different graphics. But we can see that the effects that we tried to apply, setting the HP to 2000, is basically nullified now. So this is kind of a big limitation in RMS. If we want to have any map with some sort of theme, is that any time we set Gaia Civilization, it basically nullifies all effects that could be applied to player controllable classes of Gaia units. So basically, whether that's a bug that needs to be fixed, it's still a problem, but it could potentially also be addressed in a different way. So rather than relying on set Gaia civilization, it could also be possible to have a uh, object attribute saying set civilization style. So that way, if we did this locally, we could do it on a object specific basis. So whereas one building that we create could have uh, the Aztec style and one building that we create could have the Celtic style. So that would give us more flexibility while also overcoming that existing limitation. All right, so let's consider some other things. So objects in a map can have some special attributes applied to them, such as set Gaia unconvertible. And we can see that despite this attribute being set, which is set Gaia unconvertible, we're still able to convert this fortified tower uh, under our control. And if you'll notice, the fortified tower is not the primary object. It's the secondary object of this placeholder, which is designed to get the tower to spawn off the grid. And that's kind of a limitation, is that any special attribute that you could apply to an object, they will not transfer over to second objects. And that's usually a pretty desirable thing. Because without that, the only way to kind of change 
the way this tower would spawn is by physically changing its radius. And if we were trying to do what we were already trying to do, which was set Gaia civilization, then it would be impossible to change radius in the first place because we can't apply effects to this Gaia object. But let's change it in a little bit. So this is now the primary object instead of the secondary object. So we can see that now that the tower is a primary object, we're no longer able to convert it. And there is certain properties about unconvertible Gaia objects that are a bit rigid, whereas it would be better if they were more flexible. So we can see that even though this is a tower which is not under our control, we can see it's not attacking us. Uh, that's because Gaia buildings are normally passive towards player objects. Uh, whereas, if we go into this unconvertible archer over here, guy units are usually aggressive towards player objects. And if I were to switch this scout to be aggressive stance, player objects are normally hostile towards unconvertible Gaia objects, with the exception of walls. If this were a wall instead of a tower, the scout would not be attacking it, even though it's set to aggressive stance. And then if we take this guy away from here and we try to attack the tower with a villager, instead of attacking the tower, the villager is actually going to repair it. So like I said, there's a lot of rigid properties about unconvertible guy objects, and it would be nice if these were more customizable. So what I could imagine is that this attribute set Gaia unconvertible could potentially come with some optional secondary argument. And this could be controlled with flags. So if the flag argument was one, it would change the Gaia unit's default stance towards player units. Whereas normally they are aggressive, setting this flag to one would change Gaia to be passive towards players, and then in the case of monks, they would heal the players instead of trying to convert the players. If the flag value was 2, then whereas player units are normally aggressive towards guy units, they would instead be passive. Setting the flag value to 4, Gaia buildings would be aggressive towards players where normally they are passive. And then flag 8 would change the way villagers behave, uh, so they would attack the Gaia units instead of repairing the Gaia units like we saw. So in addition to set Gaia unconvertible, there are a couple extra special properties that could be added to objects. For example, we can use the attribute make indestructible and set building capturable. So if I were to apply this to this Gaia fortified tower, we'll also notice that I'm setting Gaia civilization over here. So this is supposed to make the tower indestructible and also convertible by the players. And what we can see is when we set Gaia civilization, the indestructible attribute causes this building to be on fire. If we were not setting Gaia civilization, this would not be an issue. And if I move the villager over here to capture it, it's still on fire and it changes its uh, graphics. And also notice that either of these two attributes only apply to buildings. We can also see that that Gaia Archer was supposed to have a make indestructible and capturable attribute, but neither of those were able to apply because these two attributes are only attributes for buildings instead of units. And it may be desirable in some cases to have Gaia units be indestructible. A good example of that could potentially be if you wanted to have a map with some natural hazards on the map that interact with the player's units, but you don't want the player unit to attack back, which is kind of happening now. If indestructibility was an attribute that could be applied to units as opposed to just buildings, then the players would not be able to attack back. And regarding the other issues, basically to make a long story short, 
Set Gaia Civilization tends to cause a lot of problems when you're trying to modify things in a map, and if the style of a building or unit was able to be set independently, that would hopefully mitigate a lot of those issues. Okay, so the next couple things I want to talk about have to do with the RMS feature, which is guard state. So if we take this example map, we can see that we have a king here, and I'm going to delete the king, and we can see that nothing happens, because if we look at the game settings, this is a standard game, not a regicide game. So we don't lose the game if we lose the king. Now, I've never explicitly talked about guard state before, so I, I will go over a brief introduction. So guard state is a feature which can do two things. So the first thing is it can trigger a victory condition based on an object that you own. So for example, if I say that the object is a king and I lose the king, this would cause me to lose the game. The second thing it can do is it can provide a resource trickle based on an object that it's owned. So this has four arguments. First is the object in question, king. And the second one, if we are using a resource trickle, what is the resource that's going to be affected? Thirdly, if there is a resource trickle, what is the rate of that resource trickle, which is the value per second divided by 100. So if I say the resource is gold and the rate is 100, this will be one gold per second. The last argument is the flags parameter. So this is what is triggering whether this is a victory condition or a uh, resource trickle condition. So if the value is one, we lose the game if we lose this object. If we say the value is two, then we get a resource trickle for owning this object. Four is called guard flag inverse. We can combine these two, which means we would only get the resource trickle if we do not own any of these objects. So if I were to restart the game with that guard state in the map, we can see that the amount of gold we have in our stockpile is trickling up because we own a king. And then if we delete the king, now we lose the game because the victory condition has been set also. We combined flag 1 and flag 2 to get the flag value of 3. So guard state has some interesting applications and it has some limitations also. So first I'll go through some of the limitations. So let's say that in addition to a gold trickle, I want different resource trickles besides that. I want food, wood, stone, and gold. So I want all four resource trickles. And we can see that when we restart the game, only the gold is going up. And that's one of the limitations of guard state, is that currently only one guard state can be used per map. And then the other limitation of guard state let's say we're, we were to say instead of generating one king, we generate ten kings. So what would happen to this resource trickle if we own ten of those objects? And we can see that despite hey, owning ten kings, the resource trickle is exactly the same as it was before because guard state doesn't stack per object owned. It's only a constant trickle for owning at least one of said object. But guard state also has some interesting applications in terms of the resource that can be affected. So it doesn't have to necessarily be limited to resources that are in the stockpile like wood, food, gold, and stone. There are many resources in the game that could potentially be affected. Some in randommap.def are just a few examples. But let's say that instead of affecting the amount of gold we have, we affect this resource, which is the Vietnamese bonus of revealing the enemy town centers. What does that do? So we can see that despite none of the players on our team being Vietnamese, we can see that the enemy town centers are revealed because we affected the resource, which reveals the enemy TCs. 
So that's pretty cool. And let's also say that this was a King of the Hill game. Now, typically in King of the Hill games, it can be difficult for the player in the middle to defend if they have to face off against every other player in the game. So an idea that could be fun is that if the player controls the monument, that they would get extra population cap. So I could try to attempt to do that with a guard state also. So instead of affecting a king, I can affect monument. And with respect to the resource we're going to affect, we can try this resource, which is bonus population cap. So we can see that when we implement that guard state mechanic into our map, we can see that we are increasing our population cap for owning this monument, which is an interesting idea, but it's kind of weird in the sense that it doesn't really make a lot of sense to do a trickle of population cap. What would make more sense if the monument was just able to store that resource for a fixed amount and then give it back if we were to lose control. Like for example, gaining an extra 25 population when we have it, and we lose that extra population cap when we lose the monument. And currently that's not something that can be done. So to address some of these limitations of guard state, basically it boils down to just three key things that would greatly expand the possibilities. So number one is allow more than one guard state to be used in a map because currently we're only limited to one. And then the other two are basically additional flag parameters that can change the way guard state behaves. So we already have flags one, two, and four. So if we were to add flag eight, which could change the way guard state handles resources in terms of storing the resource in the object as opposed to a constant trickle of that resource, and then flag 16 could enable the stacking of that resource for multiple objects owned. So we're in the situation where we had 10 kings, the resource trickle would be 10 times higher. So the next topic for discussion is areas of effect. So I've made some videos about this before, but it's possible to get an object to act as an area of an effect object to kind of apply different effects to units. So for example, if I move the scout into this range of this box, we can see that it's regenerating some HP over time. And this is done by modding the caravan Sarai. Um, so we can basically change a couple resources to switch the building to something other than the caravan Sarai, make it affect different unit classes, change the rates at which it heals, etc. And this has some versatility to it, but it also comes with a lot of limitations also. So primarily, if we mod the Caravanserai to do anything other than what it normally does, then the Caravanserai doesn't work anymore as it's intended to work. The Caravanserai can only apply two concurrent effects to a unit. So if there was ever a situation where you wanted to apply more than two effects, you're out of luck. Only one class of unit can be affected at a time. And of the effects that can be applied, the only ones that are available are applying a speed boost, a regeneration, or a work rate boost. There's so many other possibilities of things you could apply to a unit that just don't work. So an idea to expand on this kind of capability without really compromising the Caravanserai, we could probably do it with an entirely separate feature. So it could probably go something like this. We could affect object, the object that has the area of effect, and then the kind of effect that we apply would be a very similar syntax to how effect amount would work. You just say, what are you doing? For example, mull attribute. You apply it to infantry class. You apply the effect that you want. For example, move speed, work rate, regeneration, but it doesn't have to be limited to that. It could work for basically any attribute the value, the radius of that object in which the effect will be taking place, and then another parameter, 
You control some other things, like whether it applies only to the player who controls the object, whether it will affect their allies as well, whether it will affect their enemies, and whether this particular effect will stack if the unit happens to be within the range of many of these objects at the same time. So assigning such an effect to uh, area of an effect building could look a little like this. So we set villager class, we set the regeneration to a certain amount with the given radius, and we're only affecting the player who controls it. And this doesn't do much more than what we're currently able to do, but if we wanted to expand it to a different class, we could just copy the same thing. It's a infantry class, and we could affect multiple classes. And if we wanted to apply some other effects besides regeneration, we could say reload time, for example. So if we were to like multiply multiply the unit's reload time by 90%, they would attack slightly faster within that radius. So something like this could be interesting to kind of expand on the capabilities that we currently have with areas of effect and giving a lot more flexibility. So those were a couple of my ideas on the things that could be added to improve RMS in terms of effects. So hopefully you guys have found this video interesting. As always, feel free to discuss either in the comments or on the Discord server. And thanks everybody for watching.